welcome it's the norm so i've seen a lot of discussion about inflation lately and i feel like most people are wrong when it comes to inflation they don't know what's causing the inflation right now why are the prices going up why aren't the wages keeping what keeping up with the prices as well as just overall there's so many um, uh, how do I say, misconceptions wrong understandings and even misinformation about inflation so in this video i'm going to explain exactly what is going on with inflation why why is it happening how you can even protect yourself against inflation and uh, basically just going into the root causes without all the bullshit and without the propaganda as well so first off let's just talk about why people on the mainstream media are wrong and then i'm going to even talk about why the bitcoiners are wrong about inflation as well and even the gold box and everyone else why are basically every single person on the planet almost wrong about inflation so first off let's talk about the mainstream media so this is the forbes article here that i'm looking at and uh, the article is what is causing inflation and uh, if we take a look at it um, you can see demand pull inflation cost push inflation devaluation rising wages inflation expectations is causing uh, inflation so all in all there's basically no value at all the next article is from cnbc what why is inflation so high what is happening here so if we actually scroll down you can see that they are blaming covid because of the restrictions because of uh, increased costume uh, consumer demand the consumer demand is causing inflation uh, russia's invasion of ukraine is causing uh, inflation and both of these things together and other things uh, combined is causing supply chain issues which is causing the inflation uh, that's basically what you hear in the mainstream media but <laughs> these are not the real reasons for inflation which i'm going to talk about soon another just a side point uh, which i thought was funny is that from the cnbc article they're actually promoting some visa signature credit card or whatever so they want people to spend even more money than uh, <laughs> they currently are so they want you to get a credit card and get into debt and that's just insane in my opinion but anyway that's just a, a side note there and then let's talk about with the bitcoiners even the bitcoiners are wrong on inflation so here i'm looking at the uh, anthony pompliano who is uh, one of the most famous or most popular youtubers about bitcoin and cryptocurrencies uh he's asking the question i made the video just uh today or yesterday uh why is everything getting so expensive and here he says the real culprit is that we have a loose monetary policy and because of the loose monetary policy where the uh, interest rates were so low uh, that when the, uh, there was so much money going around that the monetary base is causing the inflation and this is not true either uh, yes this is monetary inflation when this happens but right now in this video i'm talking about why the prices in the real world are getting higher and it's not because of loose monetary policy and i can uh, explain how so uh, what causes inflation is how much money there is and uh, times basically the velocity of money so how many times the money uh, exchanges hands so when you print more money and if the velocity stays, stays the same then the inflation will be high but if we take a look at for example the us dollar uh, this is actually the second thing this is the monetary base for the us dollar so m2 supply for united states i think this is the the, the most accurate number uh, that uh, shows how many uh, currency units of united states dollars there are in existence uh, you could use another like m1 or m2 or m3 or m4 but i think the m2 is the uh, most uh, reliant one i'm not going to explain exactly what's the difference between the m1 and the m4 but just understand this is basically almost all the uh, united states dollars in the world so i don't know how many zeros here 14 uh, 3 6 9 12 zeros 14 and 12 zeros that's basically the the, the amount of uh, united states, states dollars in existence so for example when uh, we were here in uh, uh, 2007 this was seven uh, i don't know how, is that seven thousand trillion I don't know what's the the accurate explanation for this number <laughs> but, but anyway it has doubled since the 27 uh, 27 so basically it means that the prices should have doubled during this time but of course many of us know that they've 
Uh, some prices have gone up, but for example, if you bought an iPhone here, it's basically the same price right now. Uh, so for electricity, uh, uh, I mean electronics, the prices are pretty much the same, but for energy, the price is, is, is of course a lot higher and so on and so forth. But like I said, uh, inflation is typically monetary uh, base times the velocity of money. So let's actually take a look at the velocity of money. So as you can see, the velocity of money has, going, has been going down a lot lately. So even though the monetary base has been growing, the velocity of money, how many times these dollars actually exchange hands in a year has been going down. So the amount of money printing has not caused inflation in the real world yet. Even though there were a lot of uh, helicopter money uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, but most of that uh, currency creation actually just caused uh, asset bubbles to grow. Like Bitcoin went to $65,000, uh, S&P made an all-time high, and Tesla, of course, made like all, uh, 10x, and uh, all these assets just bubbled hard during this time. But the inflation actually did not enter the real economy. The real economy and this is what's causing the real inflation in the world. The real economy is uh, experiencing inflation right now because of bad energy policy. So uh, uh, producers of stuff did not really raise their prices during the COVID time or even after, after uh, the COVID time or at the end of the COVID time uh, uh, because the production costs were the same. But now recently we've seen that the energy prices have been going up dramatically. And when the energy prices go up, that means that the uh, cost of production goes up and the cost of uh, logistics goes up. So the, basically the cost of everything in the economy goes up when the energy is going up. So the real inflation that we are experiencing right now is mainly caused by bad uh, uh, energy policy. And I'm just going to, uh, for this remainder of this video, just talk about the energy policy. Why is it bad and why? Wh what's actually going on here? And this is, uh, in my opinion, quite, uh, quite uh, funny, uh, also sad, but quite funny. Uh, it's because Trump, who everyone hates, even I, I'm not a Trump fan, but he said many things uh, that actually has happened. So in 2018 here, uh, Trump, uh, he, he, he's given a lot of interviews and, and talks. And one of the clips that I saw online is actually when uh, Trump is giving an, a speech in the UN uh, 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 parliament, I don't know, like a, like big, big hall. And he's calling out Germany, like, why the hell are you buying Russian gas? Why are you creating this Nord Stream 2 pipeline for the Russian gas? Because like NATO is basically created because of Russian threat. So why do you suddenly buy Russian gas? So Trump, uh, and this, these were 2018 when everybody was against Trump. So Trump is supposedly exaggerating Germany's reliance on Russian for energy. And they have other articles about this also. Uh, Trump says, I think it's a horrible thing that you have a pipeline coming in from Russia. And I believe Germany is going to be betting 50, 60 or even 70% of their energy coming in from Russia. And I think it was just funny. This is basically the clip here. Uh, you can watch the, the uh, Trump actually say this, uh, these lines. Uh, unfortunately, my recording software that I'm using currently, I don't know how to record audio at the same time. So uh, th th that's a mistake on my part. But anyway, uh, this video is from 2018. This is from CBS Evening News. You can see German officials deny Trump's claim that the controversial Nord Stream 2 pipeline will allow Russia to exert undue influence over their country. So uh, this is the, the exact uh, thing that Trump said. It's sad when Germany makes a massive oil and energy deal with Russia when you're supposed to be guarding it against Russia. Uh, he's talking uh, when you're supposed to be. He's talking about USA. When USA is supposed to be guarding against Russia, when the NATO is supposed to be guarding against Russia and Germany goes and pays billions and billions of dollars a year to Russia and German officials deny the controversial uh, Nord Stream 2 pipeline will allow Russia to exert undue influence over their country. And this is exactly that we are seeing right now with the, with the war on Putin. So 
just to point out, I'm not a Putin fan. I don't I don't support Putin. I think Putin is a robber and robbers rob. But Europe especially, especially has left the front door wide open. So if a robbers rob and you know there's robbers in your neighborhood, do you want to leave your front door open? Of course not. If you leave your front door open and, and all the stuff in your house is stolen, do you just blame the robber or should you also blame a little bit on yourself? And this is basically what I'm talking about with the bad energy policy is that Germany and Europe has been way too over-reliant on Russian energy, Russian exports for their own uh, countries that has caused uh, Putin to be overconfident and actually attack Ukraine. I think, I believe uh, that's one of the reasons we have the war right now is because Europe uh, was just too reliant on, on Russia. And that's one of the reasons why I'm talking about bad energy policy. But there are also other things concerning this bad energy policy. So if we take a look at our world in data and we see what are all the energy sources uh, that we are using right now. Uh, well, what we hear in the news and everywhere right now is uh, we should use more green energy. We, sh we should use more solar, wind, uh, hydro, all these things. But if we take a look at all these other renewables, just a small amount, modern biofuels, solar, very little, wind, very little, hydro, very little. And all these forms of energy, these renewable, re renewable sources of energy, they are very unscalable. And you can see how much energy the world right now needs. It's almost on an exponential chart. Well, it's been on a linear chart for a while. But basically, since 2018, we have already peaked with energy. And one of the reasons why the energy production in the world isn't growing is because of bad energy policy. Because basically since 1970s, there's been a push to basically ban nuclear energy. And that's why you can see the amount of nuclear energy is basically consistent. And natural gas has been growing up. And this is basically the power that Putin has because Russia has the most amount of natural gas in the world. Oil has been growing, coal has been growing, except lately it's been going sideways with oil and coal, except uh, natural gas has been uh, still growing for a while. But all in all, the amount of energy has basically topped off because no, why would you invest into a new oil field, for example, if it's about to get banned? Uh, why would you invest into nuclear power if it's about to get banned? Because as you see in many countries, the green parties, the parties that want to push all these uh, renewable sources of energy that basically don't create uh, any amount of electricity, like any significant amount of energy, uh, they just want to create a lot of more those but the problem is the real world. And the real world says that these are great sources for energy, but we cannot scale them fast enough. And that's basically my point here, is that the bad energy policy is going too ambitiously for these uh, renewable sources without thinking the, uh, the transition period into these uh, renewable sources. So I'm all in for wind power, I'm all in for solar power, I'm all in for these renewable sources of energy or what's called uh, renewable sources of energy. But we need to have a clear plan for this transition. And that's basically the major problem here is that these politicians have just been talking about this, but they haven't been talking about the transition process into uh, these uh, renewable sources of energy. So right now, what the, pro uh, what the plan for the, for the global elite is, is basically everyone just stops using power. Like, just don't use power. Let's just cut down the uh, power that we use. And that's why all the prices are going up, because there's just not enough power for everyone anymore. And uh, also the food production is going down. But in this video, I just want to uh, talk about the, the, the energy here. So this is the real reason why uh, the prices are going up. And just going forward, if we take a look at this chart here, you can see it was an exponential, exponential chart. But lately, we've been on this uh, linear chart uh, that we uh, require more and more and more power. But it's not exponential anymore. It's basically been linear. But right now, if we draw that, uh, we have basically flat line here. But if we draw the demand for uh, electricity, it's still, of course, going up. 
and this uh, how do I say this difference between the demand for electricity and the supply for en energy is basically what is causing the, the uh, increase of prices of electricity and energy. And this is basically what is causing all of the uh, inflation in the real world right now. And just another thing that I want to point out uh, why I think nuclear power is basically one of the reasons why we should go for uh, nuclear as a uh, transitioning uh, energy source. Well, DOE, which is the Department of Energy in the United States, finds hundreds of US coal plants which could be converted to nuclear power. So the great thing with nuclear power is it's carbon free. So even the, the green parties should go for nuclear. Uh, one of the, well, this is another point for you, uh, the conspiracy theorists out there, Bill Gates backed uh, Terra Power is part of it. But anyway, uh, going forward, and there are hundreds, like 200 coal plants that could be uh, converted into uh, nuclear. And uh, I think that I saw a number here. So 1,200 megawatt uh, coal plants could be uh, converted to 922 for uh, megawatts. I don't know what this number is. Uh, uh, 650 new jobs. Uh, I thought I saw that you could even scale up the amount of electricity that, uh, that is created, but this is not that report, sorry for that. I, I remember this no, uh, number here was uh, higher. But anyway, let's go forward. If you take a look at uh, the Green America uh, uh, website, you can see 10 reasons to oppose nuclear energy. And this is what, what we have seen for a long time is this push against nuclear energy nuclear waste, nuclear profil, pro, uh, prof, proliferation, uh, uh, nuclear energy into uh, nuclear weapons, basically, which doesn't really make sense. National security, accidents, cancer risk, energy production, not good enough, not enough sites, cost, competition with renewables, energy dependence of poor countries. All of this doesn't really make sense. And these are like old reports, uh, a lot of these. And it just doesn't make sense because if we take a look at what is the most safest and cleanest sources of energy, this is again our World in Data website, you can see uh, what is causing the most amount of pollution here. Even hydropower is causing more pollution than... Uh, uh, let's go back here. Uh, here. Uh, let's go... Uh, yeah, so hydropower is causing more greenhouse gases than nuclear. And if we take a look at how many deaths there are in nuclear energy, and this includes the deaths from Chernobyl and Fukushima disasters, and it's almost less than even solar energy. So if we take all of these things combined, because nuclear power, the great thing is that it doesn't take a lot of land and you can scale it up fast. And then later on, uh, when the renewable energy uh, production can be scaled up, we can use that energy later and basically scale down the nuclear energy but right now nuclear basically nuclear is basically the safest and uh, the least greenhouse gas emitting form of energy that we can use that we can even uh, scale up fast and another great thing with uh, nuclear is something called thorium and this is not talked about in uh, many places. Maybe because you're watching me, you already know, know about this. But uh, nuclear power plants are usually used with uranium. But actually thorium is more abundant in nature. Another great thing with thorium is that thorium, you don't have to enrich it like you have to enrich uranium. And uh, thorium, you can only be used as fuel. So you cannot use thorium as a nuclear weapon either. So thorium in India, you have the most amount of thorium in the world. And that's one of the reasons why India is basically one of the first countries in the world to build these thorium plants. So we'll see how that uh, project goes. But I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that India is basically showing the way here. But of course, they would use this because uh, they have so much uh, yeah, thorium in the world. Uh, Russia doesn't have that much uh, thorium either. So it would be another great uh, way to... Uh, uh, just get more more thorium in the world as well. So basically that's 
that, that's it for this video. Uh, just wanted to highlight that the real cause for the real inflation that we see in the economy is not the the money printing here. It is not uh, the the velocity of money because it's been going down. It is because of energy. So now, how do you even protect yourself against this? So somebody asked me in the group here, in the Telegram uh, Telegram group, shouldn't we all buy just Bitcoin uh, to basically uh, survive this inflation? And I said, well. The thing with Bitcoin is that the Bitcoin is great against the monetary inflation. But if you buy Bitcoin as a hedge against energy uh, shortage, basically, uh, that's not really going to help because uh, Bitcoin uh, doesn't scale up with the price of energy, right? Uh, what scales up with energy is, uh, is food, is, is necessities, basically. So Bitcoin is not great for this kind of inflation that we are seeing. Also, another thing why people are wrong with inflation, what I forgot about uh, to say is when you raise interest rates to combat this inflation, because most people are wrong, they think because of the monetary policy, because of the loose monetary policy where the rates were very low, that has caused inflation. But because now you see this is not the case. So when you raise interest rates, and you pop these asset bubbles that we have right now, uh, that's not going to take down the real inflation in the economy. The real purchasing power is not going to increase. The real purchasing power is going lower because a lot of people are now reliant on uh, Bitcoin going up. They're reliant on uh, real estate going up. So all these asset bubbles are basically creating the purchasing power. So when you pop the asset bubbles, uh, it makes people's uh, purchasing power go down. And that takes us further down into the recession. And right now, even if you uh, raise the interest rates, it doesn't uh, make companies and countries more interested into uh, actually investing into nuclear energy, basically, or other forms of energy like fossil, uh, fossil fuel, fuel energy for new oil plants, for new oil refineries that could even uh, generate a little bit more power from the from the production. So the investment will not go into the right place when you just raise interest rates, hoping that the, the inflation uh, curve will go down. So when you raise interest rates, it's not helping the problem. It's actually causing more problems. So that's why the world is, in my opinion, is going to a worse place than where we are right now. Uh, is people don't understand this problem that we're talking with inflation. P previously, yeah, uh, uh, inflation was caused with the, with the increase of monetary supply because the velocity of money was going up. But because the velocity of money is not going up yet, uh, it will eventually, when people become more bullish again and, and they start spending money in the real world again, uh, then the velocity of money will start start to go up and, and that's when we have, we, I, I might say, even hyperinflation. But right now what governments should be doing is the inflation is not the problem. The problem is the high energy prices and that should be fixed with any means necessary, basically. And until this energy a shortage problem uh, here, uh, until this is fixed, uh, well, the prices will just continue to go up. And even if, let's say, the, the inflation goes down, well, your salary, salary will have to be cut down also. So the real purchasing power is not going up until the energy becomes cheap again compared to the, uh, the, uh, the, the, how much money you can make from working, basically. So anyway, just wanted to highlight why many people are wrong. So what basically the, the last thing for this video is um, how can you uh, protect yourself against this? Well, the first of which I would suggest is if possible, do any of these things. So increase your self-reliance. So, for example, if you can generate your own electricity using solar panels or uh, uh, even if you have like a diesel motor or anything like that, when there are uh, the, the um, uh, uh, shutdowns of electricity or blackouts of electricity, you can still generate your own electricity. The second thing 
as if you are as close to a food source as possible, basically living in the uh, in the countryside, that will help a lot outside from major cities. Uh, if you can create your own food, that's even even better. If you have a water filtration system, if you have a water storage system, that will help also uh, uh, because there might be shortages, there might be, uh, uh, how do I say, limits on how much people can use or shutdowns uh, for a week, a few days or so on because this in the short term will not, in my opinion, getting fixed. So those, those are basically the things that you can do right now. And if you want to invest into something, uh, just investing into companies that will generate more electricity in the nearby future is basically the, the best bet. Uh, Bitcoin, in my opinion, is highly speculative asset. And Bitcoin has its place for two things. And the first thing is against monetary inflation, which we will continue to see but the velocity of money has not picked up yet so bitcoin is not uh, great in this environment that we're seeing right now but when we will see financial censoring which we will see very soon that's when bitcoin will shine also because when your bank accounts get taken down because you are using too much electricity or if you are not uh, uh, compliant with whatever new regulation comes with electricity or uh, carbon emissions or whatever that's when basically bitcoin will uh, uh, pop up again but there will be a push to ban bitcoin so it will go up and down there will be a lot of velocity with bitcoin also but that's basically those are the two scenarios where i would see uh, bitcoin uh, being a lot more valuable than it is now but right now in my opinion the best idea is just to focus on the basics and if you want to get into Bitcoin below this, uh, below this green number here, the only good thing with the chart is talking about Bitcoin is that we have a divergence. So we have we made a lower low here on the chart, but uh, the momentum indicator RSI actually made a higher low. So perhaps, perhaps, perhaps this could have been a bottom. But in my opinion, just focus on the basics, have a, a cash at hand, and by the way, have cash some reserves as well. Those are basically the only things. And this winter, uh, after this winter, I mean, in February, March, when people find out that, okay, we're still we're actually still alive, uh, it wasn't as bad as we thought. And that's when markets will uh, eventually start to recover. That's basically my idea for the markets right now. But anyway, I've, I've talked long enough, almost 30 minutes. That's basically my summary of inflation, what's going on with it, what is causing it in the real world, what is not causing it in the real world, at least yet. Uh, when this goes up, this uh, velocity, that's when we will see uh, uh, much more uh, inflation. And that's, by the way, when Bitcoin will be going up as well. But we don't see that yet. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm just reiterating my points that I made already. Anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know your ways of combating uh, inflation. I will probably pin one of your comments on the top or uh, just take your comments in and change the pinned comment into something uh, interesting about this video, what I forgot forgot to say. So take a look at the pinned comment if there's anything interesting, any update or anything like that. So anyway, that's it for this video. Consider subscribing, consider liking this video and consider, consider uh, even joining our Telegram group because it's free. It's in the description if you want to join to talk about uh, with me about things about the world, about uh, uh, Bitcoin or other investments as well. If you want to, uh, it's free. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, hope to see you in the next video and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> bye bye.